All right, so my name is Eleanor White, and I will be talking about Tadanori Yoku's um, use of shapes in all of his art. So he is a Japanese graphic designer and illustrator um, born in 1936, and he really was at the start of the pop art movement. Okay, so the first piece that I want to talk about is titled Having Reached a Climax at the Age of 29, I Was Dead. And this was his like first piece that he really came out with in 1965, which kind of put him on the map when he moved to Tokyo. And like immediately you see all of the the shapes that he uses and the symmetry, which is going to be a theme that you can see in all of his art. There's an insane amount of symmetry and use of like original poster style like there's the combination of like pop art poster style and um all colors too so if you really look i've like pointed out all the different spots where the shapes are so and everything that becomes a motif in his work will be those lines um and like the division of the page in a very geometric way all right, so the next piece then is the Earth, Wind, and Fire 1976 um, poster that was made for this band that he did a bunch of work and like the psychedelic music and you can clearly see how his style would be translated really well in that type of music. But this painting specifically is super interesting how geometric it is in a different context of how there's an alignment of circles that pass through the center while having an upper and lower division of the painting. It like almost reminds you of a Renaissance painting in the way that it's styled with the heavenly upper half and then the foreground on the bottom and the like circular chambers that you see in a lot of Renaissance paintings. So that is super interesting and looks very mathematical when it's just broken down by the shapes, unlike the last one that we saw, I think. All right, so super similar in the style that you'll notice of the use of circles in these shapes. So where the last one was kind of clear in the original photograph, you could see where all of the shapes would be divided. This one I think is more interesting to look at because it's so complex. There's so many different shapes and they're coming out of a lot of different areas. You have the bottom that's so, like much more circular, but then the circles continue in a straight line through the exact center of the piece, like you could fold on the dotted line of all those circles, but the upper portion is all symmetrical with the use of squares, which is really interesting. And it still, even in the last one, like would look like a sports arena almost. Okay, now for the last piece is the 1969 album cover for Kokoro no Ermato, which features Asako Ruriko as the subject matter. This one clearly has a bunch of shapes in it that we can see. So there's over a hundred squares that are divided, and then there's 13 circles on each side. And wow, that is a lot of shapes. But for some cultural significance, this was during the psychedelic period of the late 60s, early 70s. So it was uncommon to see a bunch of shapes within art and to see a bunch of rounded objects or these colors. However, this piece is pretty different and uses shapes in a very cool way because a lot of psychedelic pieces didn't use squares and didn't use sharp corners. So that's pretty fun for this time. Also, the model who is the subject matter was a famous actor at this time and was considered to be the peak beauty standard. So it's pretty interesting that we see her face replicated so many times in something that is pleasing to look at in all of its uses of elements of design because it really does have balance and movement and color and shape and rhythm and all of the important things that the shapes are giving to this piece and why we feel movement from it and the piece feels so dynamic because how these shapes are fragmented and I think that this is a very important piece to consider while thinking about shapes and symmetry in art because this has become a very well-known album cover and it clearly is a beautiful piece of design and I think if it wasn't for the shapes it probably wouldn't be remembered how it is today 
and would have gone unnoticed. But here we are now talking about it.